least with this camera there's an issue. I never know what it's doing. Anyway, hello. <clears throat> This is One Black British Woman's Voice and today I want to talk to you about the types of crimes that white people enjoy committing compared to the types of crimes carried out by black people. So it's another comparison blog. Yay. Anyway, my observation is that white crimes could be categorised as Romanesque. Romanesque is in Rome, the defunct, morally deficit and violent once empire. By Romanesque I mean that their crimes are reflective of the wealthy societies that they've created through their violence, dominion and control. As a result, whites disproportionately exceed in crimes which are depraved, perverse, sickening, narcissistic and psychotic in nature and also at crimes that revolve around the import and ingestion of illegal, expensive and manufactured drugs such as cocaine, heroin and LSD. My theory being that these categories of expensive drugs are types that enable them to escape the mundanity of the materialistic world that they've amassed and kept an iron grip on and something to do with always trying to look for that new high. Anyway, in short, they practice the type of crimes that donate the lazy, apathetic, sexually deviant, addictive, autocratic characters that would naturally be shaped living in and ruling in a society imbued with wealth and supremacy, i.e. Romanesque. To summarise the nature of their crimes, they would be crimes that are expert at preying on or sexualising the vulnerable, stealing from other people and indulging in heavy drug cultures such as the 90s rave scene and fluffy bong culture that they promoted in their deadhead films like Wayne's World. Actually, I enjoyed that film, so no shade. Wayne. To chronicle these crimes, they would come under the following classifications, such as paedophilia, human trafficking, sexual uh, slavery, sorry, burglaries, racism, school shooting with a few church shootings thrown in for good measure because there's nothing like killing a person who's vulnerable whilst praying, rape, serial killing, and the theft of properties and possessions. To add examples, many white nationalists have criminal records for deviant sexual behaviour as well as psychotic violent crime. A poor white side, a senior member of the EDL, the EDL being the acronym for English Defence League, which is a white identity extremist uh, organisation, was convicted recently for grooming and abducting an unage girl. As a genetic demarcation of the psychotic nature of this man, he was perversely a former public campaigner against child grooming. There was the Labour councillor called Sean Morton, who was convicted recently of paedophilia. A Tory councillor called Peter Sidworth pleaded guilty to molesting young boys and was given two years probation. Two years. And least we forget, there was the white children's entertainer, Jimmy Savile, who was found posthumously to have raped hundreds of children during his prolific children's entertaining career. Then, of course, there's the drug culture of the music genre is descri uh, um, described as Britpop, heavy metal, acid house, house and pop music. And they're violent drug heavy festivals such as Glastonbury and Best of All's. Never would go to one of those. I could go on and on listing their fondness for predatory crimes such as serial killing etc. But this is a comparison vlog. So let's now look at black people. Now, black people have been found to err uh, on the side of what I would describe as survival and consumerist type crimes. And these survival and consumerist type crimes are purely reflective again of the standing with which they have in British and American society. In other words, due to white supremacy, many black people have been restricted socially, economically and academically. And due to persistent harassment from the police, we've been taught that we are powerless against the corrupt law enforcement system that seeks to persecute us on the flimsiest pretexts. So, Naturally, what ensues is that the crimes commonly perpetuated by black people are namely survival and consumerist crimes. Crimes uh, committed just to survive or to appropriate expensive goods promoted in aspirational adverts aimed at affluent whites. To provide finer detail, the classification of these crimes would be muggings with which to procure the expensive goodies denied to them or cash needed to even buy a loaf of bread um, to feed their families. Then there's a, sorry, two, knife crime, purely because, again, they need to protect, protect themselves from more feral elements of a poverty-stricken society, and also because we as black people know full well that the police have no interest in protecting us, and so you feel on the bound to protect yourself by any means necessary. And three, the fraternal membership of gangs, with which to gain the camaraderie and protection they need to protect them uh, from false claims of white people, the brutality of the police, and unfortunately, some of their poorer neighbours. Yes. I understand there's a link between race and poverty. Now, as you can see, survival and consumerist crimes aren't associated with sexual depravity or even expensive drug habits. Instead, these crimes mirror the need to obtain the money they need to eat 
and the advertised items socially economically withheld from them. Furthermore, a study was conducted linking gang membership with the mental health issue of depression showing that young black men in particular are searching for belonging amongst fellow black people in a white society that excludes them financially and withholds the mental health resources that would have better benefited them. Please check out my video on why black people should search to use black therapists to further expand on white supremacy, um, the link between white supremacy and black mental health. Anyway, now, I can hear white voices shrilling, but what about gun crime? Black people are always involved in gun crime. The rap videos tell me so. And also, uh, and what about drugs? Black people love to sell drugs. I mean, my weed man is Tyrone. He's black, you know. Yes, black men both here in America are commonly linked to gun crime, which is slightly divergent to a survival or a consumerist crime. But historically, guns were invented by the violent white race. And statistically, the prime owners and beneficiaries of arms dealerships are, drum roll, white people. Case in point, a white gun dealer by the name of Paul Edmonds was jailed for 30 years recently for firearms offences spanning 40 years and the police force have been taken to task recently for selling on confiscated guns which have wound up being linked to future crime scenes. Yes, you heard right. The police actually legally sell on the guns that they confiscate. But you didn't know that. That gun that killed your friend got sold on for money for the police. Furthermore, do you think the fact that 98% of school shootings hadn't been carried out by angry little white boys has passed me by? Also, when it comes to drugs, the black people that sell it are far further down the train than the whites that grow it and smuggle it. I mean, what's that film? Was it Layer Cake where they grew all that weed? I can't remember. Oh, anyway, some white film anyway about people growing weed. Anyway... All I wanted to do was look and compare different crimes by black and white people. Whites enjoyed depraved and fraudulent crimes which are endemic to a Roman ex society and blacks simply perpetuate survival and consumerist crimes forced upon them because of the white supremacist societies that we live in. What are your thoughts? Drop them below. You could completely disagree with me. But in the meantime, this is one black British woman's voice and I'm out. Not committing crime. <laughs>